Hey, this is John Orberg, and I am in the Seattle, Washington area, and this is really, really, really cool, because this is my friend Scotty Scruggs. You might know, Scotty and I worked together at Menlo Church for 12 years. 12 years, yep. Um And he's just an incredibly gifted guy, doing a wonderful job leading a church Back up here. Back in the day, I had dark hair. Now I have gray hair. You've had gray hair <laughs> Back the whole in the time. Day. So I always white hair when I'm, you came. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. And your hair looks fabulous. Hey, thank you. It looks better uh, than ever. Yeah, whatever. Yep. yep. Uh, so um, I got to be with him, be with the staff today. I just thought I just wanted you all to see Scotty, and I want to go and have dinner with him and Nina and Nora and Jude mm -hmm. after this. But today has been a wonderful chance for us just to reflect on um, friendship, relationship, and we were talking a little bit about uh, discomfort, yeah. pain, and suffering, and uh, that's been a uh, not infrequent theme. Um, in these talks and uh, in the journey for me and my family. And uh, I loved how you were talking about its role in yeah. growth and faith. And yeah. so yeah. I'd love for you to say a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I've um, it started uh, not too long ago when I was just processing some stuff in my own marriage and family and was talking to a friend about just really how so much of the, I don't know, tensions or conflicts in our marriage, we're creating these feelings of just great discomfort. Mm. And this person said, you know, Scott, it sounds like you're reading that as a sign that you need to, like you've done something wrong or you should run away or there's a problem versus an invitation from Jesus to take a step forward. Wow. And I hadn't really ever thought about discomfort. I mean, again, you know God works through pain and there's all the theology around that kind of stuff, but I actually think about that Jesus would actually want to deploy and use moments of discomfort Mm -hmm. to pull you closer. Um, there's a moment in um, the Gospel of Luke where Jesus is first calling uh, Peter and Andrew, and he's there, there's a crowd, he's teaching, and he asks uh, Peter, who's just back from fishing all night, he's cleaning his nets, he's exhausted, he wants to go home, he's tired, he doesn't even know who this guy is, what they're doing, mm -hmm. and he says, hey, can you get in the boat with me and put out in the water? And I just thought about that because it just felt like this is like this great inconvenience. It's interrupting his day. Mm -hmm. He's bothered by it. It's not yep. comfortable. doesn't know this guy. The invitation to follow is really deeply tied to this moment of I want to inconvenience you. Wow. I want to interrupt you. Wow. I want to get just disrupt your little life plan for a moment. That's the way to get closest to me. And what's so amazing about that moment, if you go back and think about it, is when you look at the moment itself, the person who's closest to Jesus is Peter. The person who was in the crowds were not inconvenienced. They got to keep listening. And, of course, when things got uncomfortable, they would often leave. But Peter, his first, I mean, think about how many times they spent in that boat and all the stories from that boat. Yeah. The first moment was a moment where Jesus interrupted mm. and discomforted his life a bit. And so I've just been living with that around stuff with my marriage. And the moments where I feel like discomfort going, okay, now Jesus, you're saying, even if I can't control this moment or how Nina's feeling or what's going on or with my kids, Jesus is saying, I want to use this to get actually really close. I was thinking about, um, uh, there was a book years ago by a social linguist from USC, Deborah Tannen, called You Just Don't Understand Men and Women in Conversation. Mm -hmm. And she writes about how it's a bit stereotypical, but girl culture and boy culture tend to be different. Uh, in both cases, people pursue status and esteem. Uh, for girls, it tends to come in affiliation. For boys, it tends to come through competition. Yeah, yeah. And so words in girl culture tend to be kind of stress relieving because, oh, I'm connected, so right, I feel right. good. Whereas in boy culture, they tend to be draining because mm -hmm. I have to use them to show I'm smarter, stronger, whatever. And so she says in marriages, again, it's a bit stereotypical, but often... For a woman, the response will be, as long as we can talk about it, we're okay. And for the husband, it will be, as long as we have to talk about it, we're not okay. <laughs> and it may be in this sense, at least, that Jesus is a little more like a woman than he is like a man. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe I can, maybe I can play this back for Nina later so she can know <laughs> in that moment. About it. Yeah. I'm actually just doing what normal guys do in the moment. In now. the unlikely events that Nancy <laughs> watches this, she'll be very glad to hear me say Jesus is more like a woman. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, but, you know, if you think about... Um, as a pastor and a leader of people, I spend a lot of time interacting with people about 
the discomforts mm -hmm. of their life. And they can be circumstantial or relational or personal or even spiritual. And as a pastor, my first gut response has always been, how do I help relieve? Mm. It's going to be okay. Take it away. Versus thinking, actually, I want to be really tuned into the spirit in this moment because I imagine that Jesus is doing something or using something or coming into a moment where there's discomfort to actually create proximity with this person. Yeah. And I know, John, when we've talked about these last couple of years in your life, you know, one of the things that you've said is it actually got really, really clear how dependent I have to be on Jesus, how close he has mm -hmm. to be to get through this. Um, and I think we live in a culture, in a world where, and you'll know this from your life, we can be so, like, um, discomfort avoidant. Yeah. And I spend my job as a pastor, and so I can, for my congregation, here's a moment of looking under the hood of ministry a bit to say, I desperately want people that come to our church to feel so comfortable <laughs> and enjoy their experience mm -hmm. and have a great weekend and not feel inconvenienced. And here Jesus is beginning with people, like mm -hmm. starting out with people saying, it's going to be a great inconvenience. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's just something upside down, but maybe right side up about that, where part so, of being in leadership is being able to navigate that and then help walk people through, you're going to get closer to Jesus or Jesus is trying to get closer to you in this moment. So what do you do either with Nina or uh, at, in leadership um, when discomfort arises? Uh, do you have any thoughts or any ways that you try to cope with it to allow yourself to live with it? Yeah, I, the, the image, again, of Jesus and Peter in that boat has been the most helpful uh, because what I'll, what I'll do in that moment, because I'm of the fight or flight people, you know, I tend to want to avoid or get out or freeze up a bit. Um, and then other people, maybe that, or maybe you're more the, I want to raise up a new conflict and push it away. Mm -hmm. But I will just try to imagine the situation, Jesus coming up and saying, hey, I want you to step into this boat with me. Mm -hmm. And we're going we're gonna to be in this together. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be right beside you. And it might feel hard. You might feel uncomfortable. You might say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. But we're actually in the boat together. And it's the togetherness in the boat that's been the biggest gift to me because life's going to bring discomfort. I mean, you're just not going to avoid that. I, and I just read, and I don't even remember who it was, the way they were talking about the fight or flight uh, response, and they were adding a third option to it, speaking about getting in the boat, um, fight, flight, or float. Huh. And the idea with floating yeah. is you yeah. don't run away from it, you don't resist it or fight it, you just simply allow it to be there Yeah. and, and float in the midst of it where you accept it, you acknowledge it, um, mm. uh, and you don't have to respond to it out of emotion. Yeah. So the boat image fits right in, fight, flight, or float. Yep. And that, that's where Jesus actually is. Yeah. And it was his invitation to say, let's put out into a little bit of water. I'm going to sit next to you in this. And then all the, the life Peter had after that, again, it started at that moment. Wow. And you could just think, like, what if he just said, I'm too tired, yeah. I'm going to go home, maybe come back tomorrow, whatever that is, like he could have easily said that and his whole life turned on that moment. And so again, I often think of those discomfort, those uncomfortable moments. I can't control this. I don't like this. You know, I wish this argument wasn't happening or this feeling I have of, of uh, you know, it wasn't happening. But if I avoid it, maybe I'll miss out on something that God has for me down the road that I can experience if I just get in the boat or float with Jesus for a moment. So take a moment right now. Think about in your life. Where's their discomfort in a relationship, when you're at work, in your soul, your spiritual life, with mm -hmm. your emotion? And today, right now, don't fight. Don't run away. Get in a boat with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Scotty, thank you. Hey, thanks, John. Yeah. Yeah. See you next time. See y'all.